What do we do? I think we have to clap. We do have to clap. Again, I'm dealing with this tennis elbow from having not played tennis. I'll clap. I'm just calling it elbow. The the pickleball uh, event uh-huh. definitely left me in some pain. Yes. Like it was, I shouldn't have gone mm-hmm. against my better judgment. I did go and play pickleball and it was a lot of fun, but I thought I'll wear this brace. This is not that bad. And so that's why I think it's tennis elbow because that's similar. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, we could call it pickle elbow. Pickleball. Pickleball. Okay, ready? <laughs> we'll, we'll do it together. One, two, three. Hi, I'm Maggie. And I'm Amanda. And we're sisters. In law. We're watching Suits one episode at a time. It's a show so nice, I've watched it twice. And a show so great, I'm watching it late. Thanks so much for tuning in. Maggie's never seen it and Amanda's obsessed. They don't wear fancy suits, they are casually dressed. They are sisters-in-law and they got a show about a law firm drama that aired a few years ago. Only suits fans, only suits fans. Only suits fans, only suits fans. Only suits fans, only suits fans. This is season four, episode three, Unfinished Business, and season four, episode four, Leveraged. Perfect. It was perfect. One take one, one take. <laughs> they call me. <laughs> you did that just immediately. You were like, I got this, and you just said it. No, no double takes. No, no double takes. No triple takes. No triple takes. No mistakes. No quadruple takes. No mistakes. Oh, that's kind of fun. One take, no mistakes. One take, no, no mistakes. mistakes. One take, no mistakes. That's who we are. One take, no mistakes. One take, no mistakes. One take, no mistakes. That's who we are. Okay, and speaking of no mistakes, I'm going to read this brief that I wrote. I bet it's full of no mistakes. No mistakes at all. Um, This is what you said. And one, and two, and three, and four, and two tickets to the ballet, please. And front row tickets to all the suit skeletons coming out of the closet. Despite Jeff Malone's attempts, Lewis Litt will not be coming out of the closet, but he does come out and confront Jeff on his relationship status with Jessica. Classic man behavior, trying to sleep his way to the top. And lots of coming clean to bad behavior from the past and choices that have the oopsie bad consequences in the present. From Rachel and Logan's relationship ending to a sexual scarf touch at the end of the episode four. Donna spilling hot goss to Mike that blows up in his face. Lewis giving away trade secrets for venture capitalist trading stuff. But will Mike come clean to Sidwell about cutting him out of the deal? Or is Mike pulling one over on Charles Forsman? I'm coming out and saying it. Season four is for sure going to be a good one. Maggie, that's a good brief. You brought in segs again. We talked yeah. about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I get that feeling, I want sexual, sexual healing. Sexual healing. I want Jeff Malone. Sweet, sweet Jeff Malone. Jessica loves Jeff Malone. She does. But you know what? Who else loves each other? Well, who? Let's talk about episode three of this season. Let's do it. You want to do Rachel and Mike first? I'm going to talk about Rachel and Mike, but really the third person in this relationship, who is Logan. Okay. So this episode opens and Rachel has pulled an all-nighter working against Mike, Mm -hmm. right? She's working on the case for Logan. She comes in. She's super exhausted. She's been at school. She's been at work. She's been doing it all. And Mike's just sitting in their pretty little living room and he's been marinating, just stewing on this Logan situation. Yeah. Waiting until she was very vulnerable. Until she was so tired. You know when you're so friggin' tired, like, you want to cry, but also laugh, and, like, you hurt, and you need food, but also you don't? And you're delirious. Yes. And you're going to be brutally honest. Yeah. That's what Mike was waiting for. That's true. And he pounces. He's like, did you love him? Who ended it? And she's like, I did love him. I ended it. And as soon as she said this, I was like, she's lying. Yeah, you wrote that. I think she's lying. I think she's lying. Okay. Because it was like, just, I did it. Of course I did it. And Mm -hmm. it was just felt like too much. A little try hard there from Rachel. Then she goes and crashes. 
She's like, I got to get some sleep before I go back and do this all again. Because remember, she's doing law school and she's working at Pearson Hardman. Neither of those are easy to do on their own. And she's basically taken Mike's place as Harvey's associate. Yeah, that's a whip. She's not just like an associate. She's Harvey's she's associate. She's Harvey's associate. Which is that you know a big is, deal? Yeah, that's a big deal. Big deal. Back at the office, Rachel is in her office and Logan comes in just to check in with her mm-hmm. as her client because she needs her to run some numbers on some companies he wants to take over. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I just want to give you a heads up that I'm, you know, not not a softie anymore. I'm going to be doing some things that are tough. Mm-hmm. And she's like, listen, I'm a big girl now. Like, I wear big girl panties. Yeah. I'm going to law school. And he's like, okay, cool. So you're good if I do what I need to do. And she's like, of course. Of course I'm good with that. Why wouldn't I be good with that? Logan really wants to find, like, all of Mike's skeletons because they're going at it against each other. And he's like, I need the dirt. Which is what, this is typical. This is not just because of the history he has with Rachel. This is just what people do. But I think yeah. it's, I think there's an elevated, like, I got to really get those skeletons. It's not even Halloween, but it's time to bring them out. Right. Because he doesn't just want to, like, use these skeletons as leverage. He wants to blast it in public. He wants to humiliate Mike. He doesn't yeah. want to just use it to gain an advantage mm-hmm. in this negotiation. He wants to destroy Mike Ross mm-hmm. and probably Rachel Zane. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. So Donna is the voice of reason here. And she's saying, you know, Harvey can't do this. And he needs to get Mike to just give up. He's like, don't ruin his life. Because Harvey knows what could be what the skeletons are. So he's like, you can't do this. But Logan wants to do it. So it's like, you better go do this or I'm going to do it. Right. Um, so it's kind of like, well, crap, what, what are we going to do now? Because mm-hmm. I know I know Logan will go do this if I don't, which means that'll only hurt Mike. But also that means he might lose Logan as a client if he doesn't do it. Yeah. Like there's a lot at risk here. Right, right, right. And we find out what Harvey does to appease mm-hmm. Logan in yes. this situation and yeah. kind of protect Mike, although Mike doesn't necessarily see it as such. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. But what we do find out is that... Rachel lied yes. to Mike, which I thought she was lying. Liar, Hello? liar, pants on fire. Liar yeah. radar. Yeah. She was not the one who ended it with Logan. And this comes out because Mike then tries to dig up dirt on mm-hmm. Logan. And he yeah. goes through all the transcripts of his divorce proceedings mm-hmm. because he was going to divorce his wife and I think be with Rachel. Yes. And then Rachel got up in the stand and was like, Logan actually ended it Mm -hmm. because he wanted to stay with his wife. This divorce shouldn't happen or whatever she was doing. Yeah. And he did that because she did that and covered for him. Right. And we find out later he owes her one. Right. Because she, and she's telling Mike, she's like, I really did end it with him. But then just on paper, it looks like I didn't. Right. Which is tricky because he wasn't, Mike wasn't around. So he doesn't know. Right. It's not like he's like part of the whole story. He He just sees the evidence. Yeah. And he's an online lawyer. So he's going to trust the evidence. And, but he's going to trust Rachel on this, though, right? Like he yeah, trusts he's going to have to. But, like, I can see where he's a little some T.O.'d is what they might say. Ticked off. Ticked off. Not touched out? Not touched out. <laughs> touched down is what I thought. Uh, not tickle off. Tick, not a tickle off. No. He is not tickled off. He is T.O.'d. Off. He is T.O.'d. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, this is definitely a huge crack in their relationship. Mm-hmm. Because... As we know, like Daniel Hardman sowing those seeds of doubt. Mm-hmm. Here Logan is sowing those seeds of doubt. Mm-hmm. It's almost like he wants to dig up the dirt on Mike, but actually his below the belt game is to destroy Mike and Rachel. Pew, 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 pew. Kidney it's shot, below, kidney shot. Below the belt. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. You made a note here that the flashback of Rachel at Logan's door got me good goddamn is oh. what you wrote. Tell me about how it got you and why. Okay, because, so we have this scene and Rachel's like, no, I lied for Logan because I loved him that much Mm -hmm. that when I, after I ended it, I cared for him still. Yeah. Right. And then we see her go to Logan's door and Logan's wife is there and she's clearly come in to like make out with him. Mm -hmm. Or more. Or more. I don't know. Maybe have a morning meeting because it was in the morning. It was in the morning. Yeah. It was like 730 in the morning or Mm -hmm. something. And Logan's like, my wife's here. And I just, all of the emotions of all the reveals that had happened 
were coming to me, and I, I was like, is this happening right now? Did she just leave Mike Ross to go? Oh, you thought this was a real time. I, I didn't catch the color change. It's, you know? it's, it is a very discreet color change. It doesn't have that like warm green kind of color that that their look has yeah, to them. Usually, yeah, usually, usually it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one doesn't. No, it was it might a, be the natural light one. coming from the hallway in their condo. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But I was, I was like, <gasps> Ooh. that was the sound I make. Oh, 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 But anyways, is she? It was in the past. In the past, she had gone to his house. His wife was there. She heard them fighting inside, and he was like. Like, I would have an affair with a paralegal, is what he said to his mm-hmm. wife. Mm-hmm. Oof. Wow. And then Tell she goes a run-in. Really she and goes a run-in. And that's probably when she decided to end it. Yes, I would, for sure. Well, I wouldn't have been in the situation. I would never have been in the situation. <laughs> but then have someone talk about you like that really shows you. So rude. Shows you their character. So rude. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. them. Yeah, believe them. What did you say? I said let them. Let them show you who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Believe him. Yeah. Let him. Yeah. Do Let it. him. So then Logan goes to apologize to Mike at Mike's office, at Sidwell's office, Sidwell Investments, because Rachel has said, I need you to lay off. Mike's, he says, okay. And then he goes mm-hmm. to apologize to Mike. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like you didn't believe me again. Second time tonight. Wow. It feels like to not be trusted in your own home by your um, sister-in-law, who is not related to you by blood, but still um, comes in here. Most sister-in-laws are not related to you by blood. Comes in here saying, (laughs) I am smell, and I allow her into the house, and then she doesn't believe me whenever I make a mistake or get it right. I can't win for losing. That was a really bad Sean Connery. And uh, Sean Connery is supposed to be the one that like everybody can do, yeah. <laughs> and that shows how bad my impressions are. I didn't know I was even doing a bad Sean Connery. I was just doing what I thought was a cool new character I had invented, but instead it was lazy Sean Connery. <laughs> my sister in law. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go 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 go. So then Logan goes to Mike at Sibyl Investments to apologize to him because Rachel said, "Hey, you need to pump the brakes." And he says, I'm doing this because I don't want to hurt Rachel. And then Ugh. they just stand there looking at each other's eyes, but also about to have a dick war is what it looks like, you yep. know. And, but we know Mike's, we know Mike. Mike's, got, Mike's mm. the hammer. Mike is the hammer. Two million likes worth, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Instagram for us. Yeah, on TikTok and uh, TikTok. TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. Up next, we have Mike and Harvey, okay, which is like kind of folds, kind into, of this folds into this story. Donna and Mike sitting on a little park bench, getting caught up on the hot goss, right? Uh, Donna lets him know that Harvey has found his dad's old records. He's so excited, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's giving him He's trying to here. buy them. Yeah, whatever. And then Mike leans over and tries to kiss her, and you put on the cheek, and I said, I think it was on the ear. It was a weird spot to kiss somebody. Well, it's just like, I guess that's their friendship. I'm just trying to think of people I know who I kiss goodbye you don't kiss me. I don't kiss anybody goodbye, except for, like, my kids and Kyle, my yeah. husband, your brother. Yeah. Like, who do you kiss goodbye? Uh, at most people. You're the only person I don't kiss goodbye. Well, I kiss I... all kinds of people goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. I don't kiss anybody goodbye. I'm just making this up for entertainment. I, I just was thinking, I, I don't kiss people goodbye, so I thought it was like, okay, is this, like, something that New York lawyers do? I think some people kiss people goodbye. I don't know. I never see it. Are are you out a lot with different people? I'm always out, Amanda. Well, then you're not kissing enough people. Constantly out just watching people. I'm like, how are these people saying goodbye? I feel like you've always got a kid hanging on you. So it's probably harder to just kiss your friends goodbye. It's true. Because I'd be like knocking kids. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. A new challenge You should start. You should start kissing people goodbye. Okay. Okay. So then Harvey is like, all right, I'm going to cripple this Gillis deal. Yeah. And I'm going to go to his lender. And I'm going to tell his lender, you cannot give Gillis any money. Mm -hmm. And then Mike interrupts and he's like, oh, fancy seeing you here. Harvey just did this with another banker Mm -hmm. uh, like seven months ago. Mm -hmm. And you absolutely can still give Gillis money. Mm -hmm. And Harvey has a restraining order on him about this case. So if he is bullying you... You're going to get subpoenaed and mm-hmm. everyone's going to be in big trouble. Yep. So then Harvey's like, okay, here's what I have to do. I have to dig up some dirt. He goes to tell Gillis that Mike was a drug dealer. 
Yeah. And that he showed up to his interview with a briefcase full of weed. <sighs> dime bags. Bunch of dime bags. So if many I dime bags. If I had a dime for every time. Dime. I know. I think about this scene. I know. And so technically Harvey has done what Logan has asked. He's quote unquote dug up dirt. He's dug up dirt. But he didn't have to dig hard. He just went like this, whoosh, blew some sand over on his desk. He already knew that information. But he goes to confront Gillis about it. Gillis is really upset also because Gillis's son died of drugs. Right. A marijuana overdose. Was it a marijuana overdose? No. No one overdoses on marijuana. Okay. I, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to make you feel stupid. <laughs> No, I was doing a, a joke there. Okay, he doesn't. He, because I was like, wait, like, I don't know if maybe Gillis's son, was he die from an overdose or did he drop, die because of drug related issues? But yeah, something that know. Harvey knows this is going to get Gillis where it hurts. Yeah. And it does. Then Mike goes to confront Harvey and he's like, what'd you do? He's like, well, I shot you in the knee so he wouldn't shoot you in the face. Without me, you are literally nothing. And, <sighs> which is true. I mean, Harvey kind of did him a favor because Logan was going to keep digging and he would have found out. He would have yeah. found out everything. And then Logan comes in, he's pissed because there's not proof in the paper. He goes, why would I do something in uh, public when I can do it in private? It's done. Like, I did it. It's done. Don't you worry. To get Harvey back, Mike goes and gets those master tapes of harvey's father uh, that way that harvey can't buy them and donna takes the blame because she mentioned it to him in their hot goss coffee session little morning coffee she feels really guilty yeah but she also thinks harvey was an asshole she's like i feel really bad also you're an asshole so like these both of these things can be true yes you know? i can feel bad that i shared personal information with mike and then he used it against you and i can feel self-righteous because i yeah. told you not to do that and you went ahead and did it anyway so of course this is how mike retaliated because also mike went to like hear Harvey out mm -hmm. and Harvey was such a dick to Mike yeah Big instead time. of just being like hey let me explain this he's like you're an idiot yep. blah, 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 blah. okay Mike's gonna save uh, Gillis's company with or without Gillis but Gillis does not give a shit he's so pissed at Mike he's so mad that Mike didn't disclose that he was a drug dealer and that right. Harvey and Mike both used his son against him yeah yeah uh, so it's kind of like too late right yeah too little and too late Mike ends up giving the tapes back to Harvey uses Rachel to send the message yes so Rachel sends that message back brings him you know the tapes Which I guess a nice it's reconciliation kind of like a peace offering you yeah. know it's also a little childish that they're having to do this through a woman Woman, right? They're just sending this woman back and forth to run their Rachel is a pawn. Messages. She is a pawn. She is a pawn. The third storyline in episode three is the Lewis, Jeff, and Jessica, which is one of my favorite storylines ever. So cute. It's it's so great. It's so adorable. Basically, it's the second episode where Lewis and uh, Jeff Malone have had an amazing scene together. They like have some great really chemistry. Great chemistry. Yeah. Yes. Basically, Lewis is. Trying to be friends with Jeff Malone. Yeah. Jeff is trying to get in Jessica's pants. Yes, again. Again. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to get Jessica to work with him, Jeff decides he's going to make Lewis a little uncomfortable. Yeah. So he starts, like, rubbing his back. Mm -hmm. He starts making all these sexual innuendos. Mm -hmm. And bless Lewis's heart. Mm -hmm. He's, like, running to Donna. And he says... I think that Jeff is in love with me. Mm -hmm. And it's because he's mentioned the penal code three times in an yeah, SEC that'll do filing. It. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. Donna goes, Lewis, oh, you shut the front door. And he goes, no, I'm going to shut the back door, which made I, me this is so great. LOL. Yeah. Also, Donna was like, why would he ever think that you were like that you were into him or mm -hmm. that you were into men like mm -hmm. what what were the things you were dropping? And he goes, I did say that I eat cock for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Mm hmm. Which is kind of a dead giveaway. So Lewis is kind of like panicking about this because he's like, I thought he was my friend, but now my sexuality is too powerful mm -hmm. and now he wants to be with me. So he's in his office and Jeff Malone comes in. He says, all right, we have an all nighter. We got to grind it out, pound mm -hmm. it out. And Lewis is like, wait, no, stop. Stop this. Like, I hate to break it to you, Jeff. But I am like, so I am sorry. Just not, I'm not into you. And then... For a second, Jeff's like, what? And then he's like, oh. Mm, you got yeah, me. Yeah, I'm so embarrassed. I mean, he's so good at this. He's, he's so good. He's Jeff Malone. Jeff Malone. You're so good. <laughs> Call us on the phone. Jeff Malone. 
Jeff Malone. Jeff Malone. Yeah, and so uh, it looks like he and Jessica have to work together. Right. Jeff and Jessica have to work together because now Lewis is out. Lewis is like, I need to separate myself from you. Mm -hmm. It's just a little too raw. Right. And so they have this like all night sushi review because Jeff had a case once where which they said sushi, but it looked like Chinese food, and I was a little disappointed in that. Yeah, those were like Chinese to go containers. Yes, like there was some kind of shrimp fried rice, and I was looking for sushi Sushi. to go containers. Yeah, because the firm was paying for it. Prop department, come on guys, didn't get it. Yeah, but they're sitting there and trying to listen to all these tapes. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. And then Jessica's like, I hear something, and they share a headphone. Mm-hmm. And they catch it. They mm-hmm. get that one sound bite that they needed that mm-hmm. an associate mm-hmm. totally would have mm-hmm. missed. And then they like are standing there and they almost kiss, mm-hmm. right? And then Jessica's like, uh-uh, this is not going to happen. Right. And she has to leave this conference room that they're in, which I've got to assume many ways out of this conference room for fire safety. Mm-hmm. Jessica has to leave the way she chooses. Facing him, about to brush right up against his Mr. Malone, you know? Yeah, she faces him, rubs his, like, rubs his body as she scooches by to exit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, Jessica Pearson, that feels like that was, that was saying something. It was saying something. That was saying something. Mm -hmm. But then, unfortunately, Jeff gets caught in his lie. Yeah. In this lie about his sexuality. He was using and manipulating Lewis. Lewis is mad because he's like, wait, I just ran into this guy that you said you couldn't work with from the SEC. And I know what's happening. Lewis has put it all together. Mm -hmm. He knows that Jeff is trying to get into Jessica's pants, Mm -hmm. which is very close. He has already, in fact, gotten into her pants. Mm -hmm. He's been in her pants. Mm -hmm. And Lewis is pissed. Mm -hmm. He is so mad that Jeff is trying to sleep his way to the top sleep his way to an advantage and he's like for once i let my guard down i will never do that again Mm -hmm. and it turns out that woodall has started the subpoenas there's gonna be seven of them hitting the next day they find that out at the very end of the episode yeah yeah so what a way to end yes what a way to end you know i have something highlighted up here is we didn't talk about this but uh as they're doing a walk and talk Jeff says to jessica you know lewis has never eaten olives yes and you know, I put, I, I don't blame him because I think olives are overrated. I don't like olives. I, that line stood out to me, too, as a great character reveal for Lewis. Yeah, because... And you've tried them. Oh, yeah, I've tried them. And that's how you know they're overrated. Yeah, I would never say I don't like a certain food if I've never tried... I hate when people are like, I don't like that food. I'm like, have you tried it? They're like, no. Like, right. Um, that's all I got on that one. So we're going to hop into episode four, Leverage. Yes. We roll into episode four. Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite things here is when Donna meets Amy. Amy, I think, is the investment banker younger version of Donna Mm -hmm. for Mike. Yeah, and I've highlighted this here as a deposition right out of the gate. Oh, good. So Donna meets Amy, but really Amy gets to meet Donna. Okay? And she Mm -hmm. said as she's leaving, you know, she's better than I even imagined her. And they always said, never meet your heroes, right? Uh huh. So who is a hero that you would actually want to meet and you don't think they would let you down? Oh. Have I asked this question before? I think you have asked me this before. Well, for our new listeners, I'm going to ask it again. Also, you're... I'm going to have a new answer. You could have a new answer or not. Yeah. Um, Because you could have a different lived experience since the last time I saw you. You know who isn't necessarily a hero of mine, but I do think I would be delighted to meet this person Mm -hmm. is Jennifer Gardner. I know you love her from Alias, but I just feel I love like her from everything. I feel like she she's not someone that I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm such a huge fan girl. But I think I would meet her and be like, I could hang out with her. Uh-huh. She seems so genuinely yeah herself. That's a good pick. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank so you. maybe because you know my last two were Tina Fey and Taylor Swift. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to meet Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. You don't think she, the, the key is would not disappoint you. Oh, who? Well, I don't think she'd disappoint me. I don't I, think she would either, but I think she's probably pretty busy. I think Jennifer Gardner would like sit with me for a little bit. Yeah. Here's who I think I actually have a really good chance of meeting. And I always liked him before, but now that I'm watching the West Wing, I'm back on him again. Bradley Whitford. He's like the president. Jo- no, he plays Josh Lyman, deputy chief of staff. Okay. Bradley Whitford was also in The Good Guys. 
with Colin Hanks mm-hmm. uh-huh. at, that filmed here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, cool He's been in several Hanks. things. Uh-huh. I don't think he would disappoint. I don't think he would disappoint Let's either. Let's meet those heroes. I'm, I, I, like, I actually really believe that I'm going to meet Bradley Whitford. I think you will, too. Yeah. And Tina Fey. Taylor Swift will be a stretch, but I'm not going to put it out of my league. No, I yeah. mean, keep it, keep it out there. I keep it out there. But yeah. I'm excited to meet Bradley probably this year. Probably. Probably yeah. by the time this episode airs. Mm-hmm. Yep. We see Sidwell and... He's, like, really super proud of Mike Mm -hmm. for having the balls Mm -hmm. of not asking for more money, Mm -hmm. but just going ahead and getting more money to secure the Gillis Mm -hmm. situation. Right. The only caveat is, is, like, congratulations, you're acting like a venture capitalist. By the way, you only have a week to deleverage the company. You can't take out a loan on my company and then not deleverage my company. Right. You have to get money in there or you're not going to have a job. Right. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Kind of cool that he can even do that. Yeah, super cool that he has just... Yeah, because it's in the bylaws, right? Yeah. Mike's got to get a meeting with Tony G- Giannopoulos, and he's got to get it stat. Because right? that's the only person Mike knows who has that kind of money. Yeah. There's a little bit of like banter back and forth between Mike and Amy, and talking about how great she is. She's already on it. And then he was like, wait a minute. If you don't have a job, I don't have a job. And he was like, really? She's like, no. Nah. She was like, Epstein's been courting me for months. Where do you think those flowers come from? Did you hear that? I didn't think that was Epstein. I think it was because he's a very famous financial. Oh, you think so? I thought it was someone else in the office. No. Who just has the last name Epstein. I think it's such a specific last name and it's the exact same industry that I. He was a venture capitalist. Well, he's just like investment and... banking venture capitalist. Big, they call well, him like a financer. Is yeah. What I think they say on Wikipedia. Ugh. So the Epstein uh, reference in here. Oh. I know. Does yeah, I was not watching with up. Kyle and he was like, ugh. And I was like, no, surely not. No, it's completely what that oh, is. Oh, gross. Yeah. Because he hadn't been convicted yet. I'm glad Amy didn't go to work with him. Thank God. Well, he. Is not around anymore. Right. But yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She can't work for somebody who's dead. Yes, but in but this, back then, but she could have. She could have. Yeah. Okay, so Harvey goes in to see Lewis, and they're trying to figure out, like, what the game plan is. They need to get... Uh, Lewis is going to have to intervene and get this out from underneath Mike. And so he's in there. He's quoting Karate Kid. He's doing a little Mr. You know Miyagi and a little bit of karate, which is great. I Lewis love the karate. Lewis has seen it. Lewis knows Karate Lewis Kid. Lewis has seen it, which is interesting because he hasn't really seen a lot of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Karate Kid is an excellent movie. Yes. Wax on, wax off. Um, also Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Fantastic. Cobra Kai. Uh, next thing we watch is Cobra Kai. Is it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So Lewis is going to be in charge of this. Yeah, Lewis is going to be in charge of it now. He's going to get the TRO removed. He's going to fix this. Yes, and then when Amy goes to bring it to Mike, she was like, look at this. This is being removed by some woman named uh, Lois Lit. (laughs) And Michael looks at it. He's like, I know how to handle her, which is great. Yes, and he handles her by (laughs) telling Lewis, not Lois, that Sheila Sass has gotten engaged and shows her, shows... Lewis, so, the Facebook page. Who is actually, uh, it's just a picture of Lorenzo Lamas on a yacht. And it's not. But who, it sends Lewis spiraling. It does send him spiraling. And he is just so depressed. He's completely loses to mm-hmm. Mike. Mike keeps the TRO. Mm-hmm. Harvey's like, what the heck happened? And he's like, Sheila's engaged. Mike told me he got in my head. But look, it's real. And then Harvey's like, this is not real. You idiot. You're so stupid. He's so mean to him. He was so mean to him. And it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, calm down. Poor mm-hmm. Lewis Lewis. Yep. And so Lewis is now pissed. Yeah. So then he goes, because Mike is on his way to Giannopolis, he's going to get this money, he's got the pitch, he's got everything, he solves the problem, but Giannopolis passes on it, Mm -hmm. and as Mike's walking out, he sees Lewis, who's just waiting there, because he's gotten to Giannopolis first. Well, Giannopolis passes on it even after Mike buys him a beach. Yeah, Mike buys him a beach. Is very yeah, I'm gonna buy you a beach. Oh, Whoa, baby. I'm gonna take you home like that. And so Amy actually before this reminds Mike, like they're going back and forth. She goes in and pitches a staggered board because it's going to look better than having just like, which always you should have a staggered board. Why he wouldn't even pick that up. I don't mind even in finance. And I know a board should always be staggered. Yeah. And she like does all this stuff and rewrites it. And he's like, why are you even like... What are you doing here? Why aren't you a banker? She's like, are you kidding me? I'm getting my PhD in psychology. Money bores me. She's a smart one. She's so smart. She's such a Donna. She's such a Donna. She like picks up on the industry she's in, but not like, she becomes in it, but not of it. She also calls him T. Boone. She goes, okay, T. Boone. Uh, T. Boone Pickens. T. Boone Pickens, which is, if you are from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, have probably heard that name. Probably other people outside of Dallas too, but also big money man. Big money man. Big money man. Lewis lets slip the reason why Giannopoulos is not going to do anything, Mike, mm-hmm. 
cares about is because Lewis told him that Mike is the one who made it possible for uh, Jonathan Sidwell Mm -hmm. to leave him. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing venture capitalists like more than making money, it's sticking it to the people who they feel like have wronged them, Mm -hmm. which gives Mike a great idea to figure out who Harvey's enemies are. And he finds them. Yeah, he finds one. It's really funny the way that you (laughs) wrote this. You said, Mike finds this guy at a coffee shop. Yes. Who is Charles Sportsman. And he lost a car to Harvey. It was a 63 Aston Martin. And so Mike needs this money to be able to keep Gillis Industries. He's like, that's a bunch of like bad debt. I don't want it. And he was like, I need the money. He's like, I'll give you 230. He's like, I only need 80. He was like, you have no idea what you need, son. Give him 230 million. Like sit like. Just sitting at the coffee shop. Yeah. And that's what I've heard too. It's like harder to get five hundred dollars from someone than it is, it is to get, get a hundred thousand. Yeah. Someone who gives you a little bit expects a lot in return. And this guy's like two hundred thirty million, fine. Yes. Send me over the paperwork. The only caveat is he has to cut Sidwell out of the deal. Once it closes. So Sidwell won't know until then. I mean Sidwell would have to read it all, but he's trusting Mike to read it. Right. Yeah. And so Mike has to put in a clause that Sidwell will not get any of that money. <sighs> woo, woo, woo. Which will ultimately lose Mike his job. Mm-hmm. But save Gillis? Mm-hmm. Ro- stick it to Harvey? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's That feels like a rock and a hard place. Mm-hmm. When Mike tells Amy that, mm-hmm. Amy's like, you can't do that. And then also Mike goes and apologizes to Lewis. But Lewis does not accept it. And so then we see Harvey going to talk to Lewis, and which is when Lewis says, hey, you know, he got the idea from me. And Harvey's like, I don't want to keep being mad at you. I don't want to have a reason. But like, you can't, I mean, God damn it, Lewis. One of the best performances by Lewis mm. to date is this scene right here. And I have it highlighted, not because I have really a deposition for it. Maybe I do, but it's more of like this line here hits when Lewis says, I'm emotional, you're cold. You're loved and I'm hated. Gosh, it which was is so like exactly good. how Lewis has been feeling this entire time, and he's right. Harvey fires back with something stupid, makes me so mad at him. Where he says, "If I w- if I was so cold, I wouldn't be here." And I'm like, "No, Fuck you, that's Harvey. not that's not what we need here, Harvey." This is really sad to watch for Lewis to watch this happen to Lewis because like Lewis knows it, and he's now finally like named it. And Harvey has heard it. He didn't didn't take it. I don't know. This was it's like hard. an unbelievable moment. It does acting. feel like a self a self realization moment for Lewis. Mm-hmm. Or I think he's known it, but he he said it out loud. He's never verbalized. He's never really verbalized. Now it's it. out. But I think maybe then now it's ripped open and he can start to heal. I hope so. I hope so. Too. I hope we, I hope so because this was an unbelievable performance. It right was here. a great performance. Yeah. He is fabulous. Mike closes this deal. Mm -hmm. Possibly he's shaking hands with everyone. Even Mm -hmm. after Harvey tells him, you always have a choice. Don't do this. Yeah. Charles Schwartzman is like a bad bad news bears. He's a bad dude because he did it. He made a bad deal with them a long time ago. Yeah. But I wonder what that deal is. Mm. But we do see um, Mike shaking everyone's hands. So I'm like, oh, what's going on here? I don't know. Meanwhile, while all of this is happening, Mm -hmm. the SEC thing is also still happening. Mm -hmm. Woodall has his house in Montclair. Mm-hmm. which I've been to. My husband's grew up there. Okay. A little New Jersey home. Okay. Harvey goes there to confront Woodall without Jeff's permission. Holding the subpoenas. Holding the subpoenas. Mm-hmm. He's like, How what many the hell su- is subpoenas? this? You're subpoenaing me? He's got seven you got subpoenas. seven subpoenas? Seven you subpoenas. A, a subpoena mm-hmm. war. But turns out Woodall's not on this case. He's got a different guy who's going to be running it. So it's not personal. This new SEC lawyer, Sean. Sean Cahill. Sean Cahill, who looks like Anderson Cooper. Uh, okay. I actually think Sean Cahill's better looking than Anderson Cooper. I agree. But I would say, like, he's the Hollywood version of Anderson Cooper. Even though Anderson Cooper's still Hollywood. Yes. It's like he would play Anderson Cooper in a biopic. I think Sean Cahill is really good looking. He's handsome. Yeah. Yeah, he's handsome. He's a silver fox. He's a silver fox. For sure. I like this character that's entered the scene. I do, too. Yeah. Sean Cahill is like, actually, we're subpoenaing lots of law firms. So this isn't personal. Mm -hmm. We've got eight here, nine here, seven for you. It's Mm -hmm. all just 
what we're doing now. This is how the SEC works, even mm-hmm. though it's totally personal. I know, I know. It's totally personal. Also, what we learned is that Sean had actually taken Jeff's job. Jeff mm-hmm. was going to get fired, mm-hmm. which is why he needed the job from Jessica. He right. was not upfront about that. Yeah. This feels like a lie, yeah. a big, huge omission. Is it a lie or is it just not telling all the truth? It's for sure an omission. Yeah. Which feels... Like a lie like a when lie. there's a relationship. When yeah. there's morning meetings happening. Yeah, you got to be a little more You, gotta, you can't just front. omit, you know? Yes. In the end, we have celebratory drinks with Jeff and Jess because it seems like all seven cases are dead. They've worked together. They've figured it out. Mm-hmm. Except for, actually, Sean Cahill wants the clients to cough up dirt on Harvey. Mm-hmm. This is personal. Yeah. So they're is... dropping these SEC. They're like, okay, we'll drop these. But actually... Can you tell us the dirt on Harvey Specter? Let us know what he is. Because it's Woodall. Because it is Woodall. Woodall's behind all of He's this. He's pulling the strings. Because Harvey got Woodall fired a long time ago. So like, this is all payback. Yes. And so he... Wait, did he get him fired? Yeah, that's what he says on the, we're on the front steps of the house at Montclair. He's like, are you doing this because I got you fired and you're you're trying to get me? Like, oh, and I'm trying, so, I missed that line. So he got Woodall fired a long time ago. Woodall is now coming back to claim his own. And he's doing it via Sean, Sean Cahill. Cahill. He's like, I don't even, I didn't even know about those seven subpoenas. But of course he knew about him, but because his name went, isn't actually attached to it. Sean Cahill is attached to it. Yeah, because Sean and him so went So this to, is a revenge yeah, situation. Is, okay? Wait. I think, Maggie, we have to end on this last little part. It's about Logan and Rachel. And you got a lot of stuff in all caps. I'm going to let you take this one. Okay. Are you I, shook on this one? I was shooketh. Okay, okay so Rachel is, like, working on these case filings for Logan. Mm-hmm. He was going to hit below the belt, so mm-hmm. he's trying to take over some companies and be a big, tough man. Right. And she's like, oh, actually, like, you should do this. And he's like, I don't like it. Come back with the work I asked you to do. Mm-hmm. So she comes back to his office. They go through all these cases mm-hmm. alone in his office. Mm-hmm. And it's getting dark, and they're having a good time, and they're just, like, laughing about stuff. I don't like it. I don't like that she's in his office. Mm -hmm. I don't like that they're having kind of, like, flirty, fun conversations as if they're old friends, Mm -hmm. because I know they have this past. Like, why is she still there? And then she goes to get up, and he pulls her scarf Mm -hmm. and touches her Mm -hmm. hair, Mm -hmm. goes in for a smooch. Amanda. And she does not immediately pull away. She takes a she takes a beat. She takes a beat. And then she goes, Logan, I better go. Not like I need to go. I have to I get at her. I better go. I better. And if he would have said don't, she would have stayed. You think she would have stayed? I don't know. I mean, obviously I've seen this. I know where this goes. Uh-huh. I'm just saying in the moment when she goes, I better go, and then she stays there, she's not completely wanting she's to like, go. Do you want to I don't know. When I kiss people goodbye, like I do, okay? And I say, I better go. And our lips are that close to each other. That's different than when I say I need to go, okay? <laughs> it's, there's also, a certain way to kiss people. Also, if you say, goodbye. I better go, and you turn immediately. But if you say, I better, better go, go, and I stay. And then do a couple. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's my, everybody who's listening who knows how I kiss them goodbye. Right, everyone knows this. Yeah, but then when she's leaving, she, like, takes the scarf off and... Throws, throws it in it the away. trash. Oh, God, it's probably such a rich person's scarf. Golly. God, I'm I think, go out of that trash oh. can down there in Canada and pick that up <laughs> where they're filming. I would. Yeah, it's, I would. It's like I would eat cake out of a recycling bin. Uh-huh. I would take a nice scarf off the top of a trash bin. Yeah, for sure. I, I would for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. Oof. Made me feel sick. Does it make you feel sick whenever we get on the train to Prediction Town? Or are you pretty good? No, at I take my Dramamine. You take your Dramamine? Yes, I have no motion sickness. Well, let's right. zip on down. Be sick free. A choo choo. Predictions. Okay. Well, first of all, let's talk about this Rachel Logan mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that Mike is going to find out about the late night with Logan, mm-hmm. and it's not going to sit well. I think Rachel is going to have to tell him Mm -hmm. that Logan tried to kiss her. Mm -hmm. And he is not going to like this Mm -hmm. because this feels like, why were you there? Why is this work happening so late? Uh Why isn't this happening? You wouldn't do that with another client at their place of business. And then also someone that you've had a relationship with. I don't know. Yeah. It's not going to go well. Right. I also do not think that Mike is cutting Sidwell out of the deal. Mm -hmm. I think he's got some provision in there that is kind of like a little sneaky sneak, and Mm -hmm. he can play it however he wants. Okay. 
I think he's covering his bases. I think Sean is going to keep coming for Harvey, and I think he's going to sniff close to the mic stuff. Okay. But I don't know that he's going to put it all the way together. I do think, though, when he's doing some sniffing, it's going to bring Mike back to Harvey. Okay. In, like, a more closure way than... Where they are right now. Records. They're yeah. in a pretty tough spot. They, so they've, think, they, there's been an olive branch extended. No olives. Right. At least not around Lewis, there hasn't been. Right. Yeah, no yeah. olives, just a branch. Yeah. Which could be used for other things. Absolutely. Jeff Malone and Jessica, I think this is going to end very poorly. Okay. Now he's lied to her or omitted some truth. He's supposed to be the guy who's taken on the SEC, but now they're coming and they're coming in hard and Sean is not going to give up. And I don't know if Jeff is actually the best defense against it. Yeah. And so this could end very poorly because I think if, if Jeff Malone costs Jessica anything to do with her firm, he's gone. Oh gosh, she's out of there. Mm-hmm. Donna is going to help Lewis and Harvey patch it up because they ended also very well. And Donna is very much team Lewis this season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's constantly trying to help him out. I think Lewis will do something awesome per usual and it'll bring them back together. Okay. I also think that Amy will go wherever Mike goes. She said she has this other offer, but I think that if Mike goes back to Pierce Inspector, she will go with him. Excellent. These are great predictions. Thank you. It's been a joy again. I love this double time that we've got going on. Me too. So I'm going to go ahead and sign us off and let's do that. Thanks so much for tuning in. You can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Make sure to check us out on our new website, onlysuitsfans.com. And you can listen to us on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere else you get your podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a review. And if you're struggling with a way to start the review, you can say, if podcasting were a dick war... Dot, dot, dot. Finish that sentence. You know, it's great that you did that because you had said you wanted to in season four make this more positive. <laughs> Instead yeah. of eat it. Oh, yeah. if podcasting were a dick war, you could eat, eat it. it. Oh. Oh.